Cool. All right. Well, <clears throat> so uh, here we are, brave new world, uh, in the middle of a global pandemic. And I think the thing that's been cool about this for, for us is to take a look back at some of the sort of historical moments of the, <clears throat> of the brand. And uh, certainly one of them was uh, Chainsmoke, the film. I believe uh, 1996 is when this film debuted, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so we thought it would be cool to get uh, the makers of the film together and do a, a look back on the making of the film and sort of how it came to be and what it meant for the brand and what it meant for you guys personally too. So um, I'm Kevin from Fox and uh, I have today here uh, with me, uh, Greg Fox and Troy Adamitis, both who were responsible for uh, the making of, of Chainsmoke. So guys, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm stoked to do this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so like, I just, you know, like I kind of riffed on some questions and uh, thought I'd just kind of start by asking you guys, uh, how did you guys meet? Like, you know, I, I was wondering, you know, how did you, how did you get linked up and, and come together to, to bring this thing to life? Go ahead, Greg. I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah. So, um, so my brothers and I uh, collaborated and made a couple motocross films right before Chainsmoke. Uh, they were called Terra Firma and Terra Firma 2. And, um, and during the making of Terra Firma 2, uh, I had the idea, I started to have the idea of making uh, something similar, uh, focused on mountain biking. And so um, I started you know, mentioning it to various people, one of which was my girlfriend at the time, uh, her name was Kristen. And, uh, and I, you know, she knew that I was looking for someone to make it. Um, and, uh, and so one day she mentioned to me that she, she knew somebody at San Jose State that was, uh, I think, Troy, you were in one of her classes, maybe? Or were you taking a, a drama class with her? Yeah. Yeah, it was a theater class or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she said, yeah, this, this, this guy, Troy, he's, he's pretty creative and uh, he's making uh, a film himself and so sh somehow I got invited to uh, see your premiere of your film you were making <laughs> uh, which was and I remember going to a, a basement of a fraternity house I think <laughs> that's right and, uh, yeah had a few beers with a bunch of college kids and, and watched your film which I I honestly had no idea what what was it about um, it was I could tell it was very artistic, which was what attracted me was the, the art side of it and the uh, the um, cinematography. Um, and so, yeah, that, we started talking, and uh, I think I mentioned it to you. You should, does that ring a bell, Troy? <laughs> no, you're you're dead on. That's exactly how I remember it. Yeah, okay. and then um, we got to talking, and uh, you told me about motocross which is a sport that I, I knew nothing about. Um, I knew a little bit about uh, mountain biking because I had done it living up in Northern California. That was just something that I got into years prior. But um, I don't know if you really mentioned the mountain bike um, video then. I think it was more, you're interested in, in film, the look of films and your, your videos being shot on film that 16 millimeter kind of grainy nostalgic look. I think that's what, that's what kind of uh, started our relationship is you guys had made some, a uh, couple of your videos, but they were shot on video on beta and VHS. And from how I remember it, you were a big on any Sunday fan or endless summer. And you guys were into surf and skate classic documentaries and you wanted that look that film look and I happen to be a film student shooting 16 millimeter and I, I shot that whole student film on 16 mil so I think that's that's kind of what you were looking for and then um you took me to the San Jose um state supercross you know that they used to do at the San Jose State Stadium yeah Spartan and, uh, Stadium what was it called? Spartan Stadium. Spartan Stadium, yeah. Yeah, and then you told me who McGrath was and Doug Henry and all these guys. And 
I was, uh, I didn't really get it, but I just knew that it was, uh, it was something that was cool. And, um, yeah. And then we started to talk about, uh, the mountain bike movie, but it took a long time before I actually got hired. I think it was like a year since then. Cause I remember right before you asked me to do it and you finally brought me on, I was ready to go down to Southern California and sleep on a friend's couch and be a PA and just try to get into the film business that way. And then, uh, pretty soon you asked me to go on a shoot, uh, out to Glamis for, we could have been Terraforma three, but it was, um, it was actually for the, the, the video fly. That's right. Uh, yeah. Fly. And it was, it was Kevin Windham, John Dow, Damon Bradshaw, um, Metzger was out there and Metzger was, you know, taking his feet off and doing all this crazy stuff. I'd never seen anything like that before. And that really got me going, you know, and got me thinking I, I, I'd never seen anything like this, you know, these guys flying through the sand dunes. And then I went and filmed McGrath doing that, which was, it was just me and McGrath and Lamson out in the sand dunes. And uh, yeah, after that, I was hooked. I thought it was the coolest sport I'd ever seen, you know, so. Yeah, yeah I remember, I remember that I was at that shoot, uh, the first one at Glamis. Um, and I remember getting the 16 mil footage back and uh, it was the first time we'd shot any motocross on 16 and, and got it transferred and brought it in to uh, the edit studio. And my brother, John, just turned to me and going, oh my God, look at this stuff. It's insane. You know, because of the slow-mo and the colors and it was just mm -hmm. compared to shooting everything on, on, I think we were shooting on beta at the time. It was just yeah. nine day difference. So you guys were, you guys were like breaking new ground, what you were doing early there with Moto. And this was also like Greg, you correct me if I'm wrong, but this was like mountain bike as a category for Fox at this time was relatively new, I believe. And and so like and and Troy, like you didn't have a ton of exposure into mountain biking, but you guys just saw this this opportunity to bring these these two things together. Is that kind of how it kind of how it played out? Well, I, I think the mountain, you know, the, the, my idea to make a mountain bike film um, really, uh, you know, pushed the decision, you know, we, mountain biking was a small part of Fox at the time, but it was growing. And, um, and uh, I had watched all the mountain bike films that were out at the time and uh, wasn't, you know, I thought, oh, we can do something better than this. And um, so I remember, so I don't know if you remember this, but I gave you, we gave you three films, three mountain bike videos. I said, check these out. This is kind of the best that I, that's out there. Um, mm -hmm. And you came back and said, oh, uh, you know, you agreed that they weren't that great, but there was one named Vicious Cycle um, that you pointed out. You said, you know, check out, check out some of the stuff they did on this. They had shot it in 16. Um, and, uh, and so we watched it together and you were, you were pointing some stuff out to me. And that, that really, I remember was kind of our first brainstorming session on, on how to shoot the film. I don't remember vicious cycle, but I do remember, um, tread and hammer time. Those were, those are the two movies that I remember. And th those, um, had a lot of influence on me actually, because tread was, um, it was a feature length film. I could tell it had a big budget. It too was shot on film, really good cinematography. Uh, it catered more towards like the, if you lived in like Boulder, Colorado, you know, that was your movie kind of, uh, more like hippie style kind of, or, you know, granola yeah, style probably, or whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Was it was narrated, I think even, right? Uh, I can't remember. I just remember really good cinematography and I could tell that they had a good budget. They took a lot of time with the uh, um, with the sound and everything, and uh, shot the racing really cool. A lot of super slow mo shots, and I really I really uh, appreciated that, and it gave me a lot of uh, ideas on what what could be done, you know, with the cinematography. And Hammer Time was um, that was more like a skate video. Um, it was like a young kid that. Um, got all of his buddies in Southern California. And these were BMXers that were 
going into the BMX trails on mountain bikes and doing, you know, the BMX tricks, but on a mountain bike. And that, that was really new to me. So I, I thought that was really innovative. It was um, guys like Todd Lyons, BMXer, Fuzzy Hall, Chad Harrington. Um, those guys all were in chain smoke, but I remember seeing them in that film and seeing what these guys were doing on mountain bikes thinking, okay, yeah, I definitely want to, um, take a bit of that and, you know, kind of use some of that because, um, I'd never seen that before. And I think that those guys may have been the ones that first started taking their bikes into BMX parks and BMX trails and trying to replicate what they do on a, you know, on a BMX bike. So I, I took something from tread and I took something from, uh, um hammer time and then uh vicious cycle i do remember watching it with you and, and i and i do remember the way that some of the stuff was filmed and uh <clears throat> but anyway that's yeah I, I do remember doing a lot of research and that was that was key is just spending the time talking about you know what is this going to be but what i thought it was going to be to what it ended up was just a totally different thing though you know? yeah yeah it was super cool like from from my point of view as a consumer of the film you know like at that time i was a cross-country dork and that's kind of all i cared about uh and so for me to see cross-country represented in a film from fox alongside all of these other disciplines so like the stuff with fuzzy in the park or mm -hmm. seeing metzger you know ride a downhill bike and and obviously palmer was amazing and it like i think it i think back to that time and it was like man that really it 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 sort of like legitimized everything in the sport at once where you know before it was sort of like you had these factions and they almost like hated each other like yeah they, yeah they did <laughs> they really did i mean like today it's different but like man like downhillers hated cross country riders and would ridicule them and vice versa it was just this yes. like but this this film brought everybody together and made it cool. And so, like, uh, I, I don't know. From 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 my point of view, it was amazing. But was there? I guess the question for me is like, did you guys do that intentionally, or like, you? What was the reason you covered this whole spectrum of riders? Was it just curiosity? Well, I think part of it was we had you know our team. Uh, we had downhillers. We had. Um, we had, we had cross country team riders. We sponsored the Diamondback team and the Cannondale team at that time. And then um, we also had a BMX team. So, uh, you know, and part of, uh, part of the film's reason for being was to highlight our, our team athletes. Um, not just exclusively, of course, but, but it had a marketing angle to it for sure. It was that, was the Cannondale team, was that a Fox team as well? Or did yeah. you guys just have a good relationship with them? That was a Fox team. As well. was, yeah, we were sponsoring them, I think, for gloves or something like that. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I, the uh, so just before we jump into actually making, you know, some of the shoots, I remember, uh, do you remember what the budget was, Troy? <laughs> no, I remember what my salary was, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember what the budget was? I do. It was fifty thousand dollars, which which was a lot of money at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't remember your salary. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it was it wasn't that, but I uh, I was happy just to have a job. I was just you could have got away with paying me a lot less. Let's put it that way. I I, I can tell you that now. <laughs> Uh, no, I knew it was. I knew it was a big break for you, you know. And uh, ninety-nine percent of of uh, kids your that age that uh, the dream of making films never get a chance to get their hands on a fifty thousand dollars budget, um, let alone uh, a salary and uh, plane tickets and and uh, you know back end support. Um, so I knew that you would put your your heart and soul into it and. Uh, it was also um, for me. It was uh, it was a lot of fun working closely with you because um, it was my first time to really be knee deep in making one of these films. Terraform one and two, I did a couple shoots, um, but it was more of um, me just checking the final edits and uh, and selling it. But uh, with Chainsmoke, you know, I went 
I think I went on like six shoots with you. And uh, mm -hmm. so I got to see, see filmmaking up close. And uh, that was cool. Do you remember what the first shoot was that you went to? I don't, but um, well, the first shoot that I, that I did, I just, I took off in a rental car and uh, ate Del Taco every day and is, and just went out and, and location scouted. You know, I, I had heard of some locations and I remember going through Utah and I just drove around for like a couple of weeks and just slept in my car and um, just shot a lot of B-roll and establishing shots. I don't think a lot of that really got used, but I was, I was basically testing with film. I was using different film stocks, different filters, seeing what cameras were working. And that was more of like a, I don't know, it was like a, a quick film school 101 or just like a prep to get ready for, uh, for um, chain smoke. But going back to um, influences, I mean, and when I said that, what I thought that the film was gonna be as opposed to what it turned out to be, was two totally different things. But the, the biggest influence on Chainsmoke was just the company of Fox Racing and the Fox Brothers because, you know, Greg was running the company. Pete was uh, doing all the designs and the ads and had a you know major influence on the look and the style. And then John Scrap, he was the guy, you know, he was the guy that was doing the Terra Firma videos. So I always remember just, getting a lot of feedback from the Fox. They would look at my stuff and some of the stuff they liked, some of the stuff they didn't like. And the way that the, uh, where I worked, I mean, I worked right next to John. We kind of shared one, one uh, uh, video editing machine called a video toaster, which is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but, you know, hey, it worked. But, you know, he was edit editing some stuff helping me out and he was doing Terra from a three at the time. And then Pete and all the designers were behind me. You know, there was just all these creative people and, and basically they could see what I was doing the whole time. So I was sitting there and I had all these like creative people behind me. And a lot of the designers were working on new mountain bike gear, like protective gear and gloves. And there was a couple of guys that were just specifically working on mountain bike stuff at the time. And then I'd always see, the new gear and the new ads and stuff. And it was really influential, you know, for me that didn't know anything about, you know, the sport of motocross, but that motocross culture just kept creeping in and creeping in to chain smoke. And so before I knew it, I was basically making, you know, a terra firma, but with mountain bikes. So, and that was, like I said, if I got that $50,000 and went off and did it on my own, it, it wouldn't be nearly of what it would be. It wouldn't be called chain smoke. I, I, I never liked that title in the beginning. I, I thought it wasn't, uh, I don't know, sophisticated enough or something. I, I wanted something that was, yeah, I remember you, you wanted to name it pinnacle. <laughs> yeah. Which is the stupidest <laughs> name ever. And cause I remember after the premiere, I think your brother went up to you and said, this movie is chain smoke. That was, that's what it was supposed to be called. Cause I remember there was some back and forth as if I, as if I had any influence over the name that was, I was going to get overruled no matter what. But when the box cover, when I saw the box cover and I saw it all together, I was like, okay, yeah, this is, that's when box covers mattered. You know, 24 <laughs> years ago, the box cover was important. Now what's a box cover, right? <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. We actually got a, a cease and desist order from uh, Philip Morris uh, mm. for that box cover. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think it got changed, but it still it, it only changed slightly to where it still gave that that uh, same concept. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know who came up with with Chain Smoke, but that that was a cool name. That was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you won on that because Pinnacle is just sad. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so guys, like getting into the actual filming, so curious to know, like, like number one, like, like how long did it take to film the film from like start to finish? Like, was it a year long? project or did you guys cram it into like a, a month-long window mm -hmm. and then and then like 
like, I'm just curious about uh, what it was like with the different writers and the different personalities involved. Are, there's got to be some great stories in there, and there's got to be some stories around Palmer, especially. Well, I'll just tell you, on, with regard to the, the timeline, so um, fortunately, we had a, because Troy likes to take his time <laughs> making doing the editing, um, and uh, fortunately, we had a hard stop because uh, we were going to premiere it at the Interbike Trade Show in Anaheim in September of 96. And so that was looming the whole time. And my memory, Troy, is that we, you got started maybe uh, like right around Christmas time or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. January of 96. So you basically had nine months to do it. Does yeah. that sound about right? Yeah. And uh, I took every, every minute of that I could. I would even sleep at, uh, at Fox. <laughs> I would everyone else because it was hard to get stuff done because it was so busy or maybe I'd be you know just there was so much to do listening to music or, or scrap was probably working on Terra from a three and then somehow you guys let me stay late and set the alarm and as long as I didn't go outside I would I would just stay there all night and work because I mean it was if I think about it you know 24 years old and somebody gave me an opportunity it's for this this you know badass motocross brand that's had a, this reputation i mean i i had to just i had to work as long as i could and just try to make it as good as possible you know because but we did we made it to the premiere <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah really. Now, I remember you sleeping there. I remember I, remember I was worried about your health for a while because <laughs> I'd honestly never seen anybody work as hard as you did those last couple months where it's just, you were just all in, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm still I, like that, unfortunately. I believe it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's really annoying. It's, you know, it just it consumes you and you always think it could be better and you, you just... Uh, it's hard to it's hard to put it away when you're when you're doing it in the middle of a film. It's hard to leave it at work and go home and you know enjoy life and then wake up and it's just it's just constantly consumes you. Yeah. 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 So so yeah. Let's go start off we're, um, with the shooting. My memory was you, you went to shoot at the Cactus Cut maybe in Arizona. I think. Yeah, you got a good memory. Yeah. So. It also, also to answer your question, um, Frank, um, about the different disciplines and stuff. Um, I think that it was originally going to be a lot of cross country. So, you know, Tinker Juarez and um, Allison Sidor and uh, like the, the Diamondback team, Cadell Evans, Joe Parkin, Gunnar Shogren, all, all those guys were all there. And that was, those were my first shoots at the Cactus Cup, which was, it was cool because it was a more of a, a loop race. It didn't go off into far, um, you know, it didn't go on for miles that was hard to cover. I remember I was able to get a lot of shots and I had seen it before in other films, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the mountain biking part of it was there. And then um, I think as time went on, guys like Metzger were interested in mountain biking. And then I think once I found out that Sean Palmer was a part of this film, that's when everything changed. I mean, because he, he was probably one of the first guys to ever wear motocross gear. And, and, you know, no one else was doing that. Right, Greg? Oh, no, he was the first. Yeah. And he, he just looked cool in his gear. And obviously he had this, this, uh, crazy reputation, but he, he was super cool to work with. And, um, yeah, he just turned the movie into a completely different film. Because of Sean Palmer, I, I don't. It wouldn't be chain smoke without him. I, don't I, I agree on that. I think the fact that he was a pro snowboarder that had been in a bunch of snowboard films also gave him the kind of perspective of what a powerful medium uh, video is, and um, and so he was willing to to put in the time and effort to get the shots, whereas some of the other riders, you know, who didn't grow up, you know. Uh, in the action sports world like he did, uh, didn't, you know, get it as, as well as he did. 
Yeah, I remember, I remember it, it was pretty similar to like how motocross is today. I remember that the guys like Sean Palmer, the downhillers and, and, the, and the dual slalom um, athletes, they had more time. Like they, they kind of got the, um, you know, hey, this is a good opportunity for marketing. The racers were, were difficult to get a hold of, you know, outside of the races, you know, is yeah. similar to what I deal with today, which is fine. But I think that's why it became more of like a Sean Palmer, Randy Lawrence, Mike Metzger. Uh, but then also Missy Giovi. She was, she was amazing for the, uh, for the movie too. She was such a cool, uh, a cool character as well. So different. And I don't know, just uh, perfect for, for the film. So it, it, it you know, the, the downhill, and um you know the park stuff and the the more of the trail riding and all that i guess you'd call it enduro now but that's that took over probably 75 percent of the of the film but just because those guys were available they got it and they you know they had colorful personalities so it was um yeah it's also easier to, to make it look exciting on on the screen right yeah I'm, um Cross country was tough. I mean, when you have, you know, Missy Joby charging down, uh, you know, Big Bear, and then you cut to that same, you know, mountain, but a cross country race, it's just, you know, they're just going three times as slow. So, and that, that chain smoke was really aggressive with like a, you know, a heavy soundtrack. And it just, uh, yeah, like I said, I, it just kind of took on its own. Yeah, I was just trying to, to, to make it feel like terra firma. And I think that guys like Palmer and RL and Metzger just gave that attitude. And I think that's why it worked. Yeah, I think it blew minds for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned, um, you mentioned all these athletes. And was there ever a time when, uh, how did, I'm just curious how it worked with them. Did you just kind of, show up and and film or did you guys have to do a lot of you know like sort of pre-production planning and like here's the shot we want or was it more just sort of like just go ride um well let's say um for the diamondback team that segment that was in las vegas it was actually outside of las vegas it was called uh red rocks canyon red, yeah by red rocks the, the, the trail is called Cottonwood Canyon, I think. That was, um, I don't know how we got that whole team out to Las Vegas, Greg. Maybe you can help me out there. Because that was, I mean, they're all, you know, hardcore racers, actually um, cross-country guys. And I, I think the reason why that section worked really well is because we took them to, like, a really um, smooth, fast single track, you know. So they, they were hauling ass through those sections. So it wasn't your typical... Um, it was more like a kind of like a downhill run, you know, and uh, but I just remember getting, you know, having to go out, scout it. I knew well ahead of time. And then somehow you were able to get all those guys out there. Yeah, I think Betty deserves some of the credit for that. You know, she lined up the uh, that was my secretary at the time. She um, there was a lot of yeah, I remember picking people up at the airport and, uh you know, getting everyone in the hotel. And it, and it was a it was a complicated shoot in that that was the first time that you shot with a helicopter, I believe. And mm -hmm. um, and communication is difficult. And so I was on the ground with the team and we had to try to coordinate to make sure that the spacing's right and, and, and you're able to get the shots. And um, I just remember that was a long day. Yeah. Yeah, and also that night before I went out and I shot all the Sunset Strip stuff. And I came back at like, I don't know, two or three in the morning. And do you remember what happened? <laughs> yeah, because just so the audience knows, uh, you know, 16 millimeter film, you have a, a, a film canister and you have a changing bag. That's like your, your dark room on location. And the changing bag is kind of like a, I don't know, it's a, a little tent and it's loose enough to where you can move your hands on. So you take the film magazine in, you load the film, you can't, get, you can't let it get exposed. And so the key was to load up as many of those magazines as you can. I think you had three. So when you got out to the shoot, and those were only 10 minutes long, so you would always run out and you'd have to take a break and go off under a tree somewhere and you know 
unload the cans and then, uh, you know, upload the mags again. But I, uh, I was so tired that I was changing out all the film that night. It was like four in the morning. We had to be four in the morning. We had to be up probably at like six for the sunrise. And I fell asleep in the chair <laughs> in the hotel room with my hands in the changing bag with like <laughs> the film. I don't know. I don't even know. But Greg, you like that one, right? That was a, that was one of your favorite <laughs> stories. <laughs> Oh, my favorite story actually was when we were shooting motocross in Utah and you, you got downloaded to, to get a shot and, and all of a sudden you got stung by a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That hurts so bad. You remember we went to the park ranger, we said, uh, he's like, what did it look like? Did it look like this? No. It had a black tail. He's like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was something like that, but yeah. Yeah, nothing happened. We were good. Yeah, I would. I was putting. Uh, I put you guys in some dangerous situations. A lot of liability. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, the, the the Red Rock shoot turned out good uh, for for cross country. You know, um, and then uh, I'm trying to remember the other the other cross country shoot that I went on with you was uh, was we went to the Atlanta Olympics and uh, in '96 to shoot. And I remember um, me and you uh, walking into the venue with all our equipment. You know, I had tripods and you had film canisters and, and uh, this big, huge. I thought, how are we going to get through security? You know, this is the Olympics with, you know, terrorist fears and stuff. And we just walked right in like we own the place. <laughs> I know. Huh? Probably to this day, we have, you know, that's the only f footage that we shot at the Olympics that year. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think uh, who, oh, you know what? There was that, that bomb went off like a few days before too. So it was, a, yeah. remember that, that, that uh, the Richard Jewell story guy, yeah, that, that happened like a few days before we got there. So I thought that security would have been crazy, but maybe because it was mountain biking and it was out in this open field, you know, just yeah. outside of Atlanta and there, there was just no way you could police that, but. Yeah, yeah, I remember, remember walking right premiere, in. That's, sorry, at the premiere, I remember that when that segment came on, I felt like we got the best reaction of the crowd. I think it was a cross-country heavy crowd at the at the premiere, and and uh, mm -hmm. and just to be able to see some Atlanta Olympics footage, um, mm -hmm. you know, got people stoked. Remember, did there was two. Oh, go ahead. I was say, did you have to get any special permits, or did you just kind of, just kind of? I think we tried and, and got nowhere with the permits, and so we just decided to go in as pirates. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, by the seat of our pants. But yeah, we, we got it, and uh, one of our riders, uh, Susan DiMatte, got a bronze medal. So it was, that, that was a good memory. Yeah, yeah it was. But, but speaking of the premiere, I remember there was two screenings. There was an earlier one, and there was a later one. And the earlier one was was good, but the later one um, was packed, and they couldn't bring any more people in, so we had to shut the door. And there was a bunch. It was in a uh, a uh, like a banquet hall, uh, a conference, big huge conference center uh, inside of a hotel, <clears throat> and there were chairs all over the ground. It <clears throat> it fit a lot of people, but the second screening was insane because people were like trying to break through the doors <laughs> because. I think that that crowd maybe had, I don't know, a few more cocktails or whatever. And I think that was more of a rowdy crowd. So they were screaming and the music was playing loud. And I remember standing in the back of the room and seeing the doors, people like trying to get through the doors to get into the premiere. So that, that was a cool memory. That was, it's, yeah. It was it's great. funny, like, I, you know, for like maybe some younger people that are, that are watching this now, um, premieres of, of films in our sport back then were a really big deal. Like they don't happen as much, if at all, anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember that one in particular. I was there, and uh, it was mayhem. Like that later show was mayhem, and I for sure, uh, I, I had a big night. And I remember like probably not showing up to the trade show booth for the company I was working for on time the next day. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a big night. Hey yeah, Troy, you. Go ahead. No, that that just uh, <clears throat> the premiere kind of 
it was rewarding, you know, it was, and I think a lot of the bands that were in the, um, in the soundtrack were there. And I don't know, it was just a, it was just a cool feeling to see the reaction. Cause you know, we were doing something totally different, completely new for Fox. And there was a lot of pressure on me. It was good pressure, but you know, to make sure that we did something that, that, you know, Fox was proud to put their name on and that, that fit within their culture. And, um, when you're in a big room with a bunch of people and they're screaming and hollering, you know, at your movie, that's a great feeling. Yeah. yeah, It made it worth it. Like all those nights I slept at Fox. I was like, okay, (laughs) that's why I did it. That's all I need. (laughs) Hey, Joe, I want to go back. One thing you mentioned the helicopter and the helicopter, uh, shooting with a helicopter. Um, today you'd probably do it with a drone or, or not just a question. I'm curious. And then, also, too, that helicopter that you guys use featured um, pretty prominently in the film. Um, and also, I believe it was at the same helicopter that you guys used in some of the terra firma films, or was it a different one? It was the, uh, it was the same one. I think it was just painted differently. Because, I mean, it's no coincidence that terra firma 2, terra firma 2 starts off with that helicopter. And, and that's where I got the idea for Palmer's segment to focus, you know, cause the, the helicopter went over LA and then it uh, dropped him down into, I, f- I forget some track and he walked out and then rode. And that's, that was the idea to bring Sean Palmer over, you know, and drop him off on top of the mountain and get out. But um, that Viper. was, that Viper was my f- name of it. Yeah. Viper. Yeah. That was my f- first time being, uh, in a helicopter and, um, and then we did it one other, one other time for the shoot out in Las Vegas. And yeah, just, I mean, I, it just, it's a perspective that, you know, you never really get to see that was, you know, just being able to track with a rider because at that time the POV cameras weren't, weren't much, you know, I think we had a uh, Metzger try one when we were at top of the world, but it was like a, the size of a toaster on the, on your helmet. And then, I mean, cause the film mags, this was like an old world war two, that that they used to mount onto the uh you know the fighter planes to get those pov shots so it was super heavy and and we wanted to all be on film but you know metzger tried it for like a a little bit he said i'm I'm not wearing this thing anymore (laughs) so um so the helicopter you know to be able to track the riders and i don't know that was just a i wish we could have had the budget for helicopters every shoot but yeah it was uh I wouldn't say it was groundbreaking, but it was just a, um, it was something that, that ever since then, I, I used helicopters a lot from then on because it was just the way to go. Now, nowadays, I don't even want to get up in a helicopter anymore. Those days are over because the, the drones are just so fast and they get the job done and a lot safer, you know, so, yeah. So yeah, I, I my, my helicopter days are over. <laughs> I remember you, you hanging out the side of that helicopter, though. Like, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> the, yeah. the camera in your hand, I mean, you're yeah. basically, you're, you got a lot of trust in that seat, the seatbelt. <laughs> well, I didn't know how to do it. The pilot, when I, the pilot, I said, well, how am I supposed to do this? He's like, you got to, you know, let, you had to let the seatbelt out as far as it would go. So you're kind of just have this strap and you're just hanging out. That's why I don't do anymore because because I think when I was doing Wrathchild, um, something happened. I was thinking about something else and I was hanging out of the helicopter and my seat belt wasn't buckled. Oh. Oh. That, that scared the crap out of me. And I thought, okay, I'm, you know, first of all, I have to be really safe. And then eventually I thought, you know what, I, it's, I'll let somebody else do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the heli. Um, so like, I was curious, like in the beginning, Greg, did you guys have like a, was there a goal for this film? Like in terms of, did you want to sell X number copies of the VHS tapes or was there, was it really just like, we want to do something groundbreaking and cool to showcase the sport and connect the Fox brand to what's happening? That that was exactly it. Yeah. Make a really cool film that, that showcases Fox and showcases the sport. And, uh, you know, something that was, you know, the one, the one thing I want to do, unlike Tread, 
or some of these other mountain bike ones was uh, I wanted to make something that was was watchable repeatedly. You, um, whereas, so to, to do that, it had to it had to be uh, shot and edited in a way where, um, like the motocross films were, where um, the music really carried you through it, and and you know watching it the fifth or sixth time. Um, you know that was if you were if you really got stoked on the film, uh, you'd you know, you'd call your buddy up and say, hey, you know, check this out. Um, and uh, you know it's a lot different than today, where everything's on the internet, and so people people you know it's you're inundated with with content. Back then, um, something like you know we ended up selling. Uh, my memory is we sold twenty thousand copies of Chainsmoke, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. Um, you know, at twenty four ninety five copy, it's a, it's a um, who would pay twenty five bucks to watch a thirty minute <laughs> mountain bike film nowadays? <laughs> but the, I mean the the motocross films were selling so much more than that, you know. Um, That's true. Yeah, yeah. The motocross yeah. films were like triple, triple that or more even. So, oh. wow. Those were the days. I know, huh? And then. Uh, yeah, once the DVDs stopped selling, it changed the whole industry. Yeah, yeah. So that that was uh, that was the end of an era, and everything got shorter. Now, what, what I'm curious is when uh, you know some of these 16 year old kids that may watch this for the first time, I wonder if they're going to be able to sit down for 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe we should break it up into 24 segments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um. No, I don't know. And also another thing is um, when I when I went to watch it the other day, I was thinking, oh, man, I hope this still holds up. You know, I, I hope this can stand the test of time. And uh, I I think it does. But I think that, the you know, obviously the, the young kid that watches this, that's used to seeing what guys are doing on mountain bikes now. You know, they're going to look at this and going to be like, OK, you know, what's this? It's kind of like, Greg, when you and I back in, you know, 96, when we watch on any Sunday. And, you know, uh, you know, they're jumping in the sand dunes, but they're only going like, you know, 20, 30 feet in the air, as opposed to what those guys are doing now. It's, it's like, I wonder if they're going to look at it and, and, you know, appreciate it, or if it's going to be like, no, this is boring. These guys aren't going fast enough. They're not going big enough. And what's this music, this like, <laughs> this like heavy metal yeah. rap music, you know, this is the kind of stuff my dad listens to, turn it off. <laughs> so I, I, I'm curious I, I'm really happy you guys are doing this because I, I think it's cool that you still think the film is relevant enough relevant enough to remaster it but I think it, I'd be curious to see the comments you know especially if I, not that we can tell how old they are but just to see what some of the kids are, are saying about it you know if they if they like it or not so it's going to be cool to see yeah, for sure. I think it's, um, I think what you said is exactly it. I mean, it's, it's, it was a different era, a different time, obviously. Um, but I think for me personally, I've watched it a couple times in the past couple weeks. And f for someone like me and like, like our age group, it, what it does is it just brings you back to that, that era of the sport when things were so new and fresh and booming mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it's, it's different than it is today. It's just like this industry, this sport is, is much more grown up. <clears throat> Those were kind of the glory days of the sport. And so I think like, it's important. I sound like a dad cause I am, but it's like, it's important for the kids to know where this thing came from. Because <laughs> it's true. And chain smoke really did, man. It was a, it was a lightning rod to, to really, I don't know, at least in my point of view, redirect and or at least direct where, films and content and the industry really went from there. So I hope people just recognize that at least, you know, so it's, it was, cause I, I personally put it in the same category as on any Sunday or in the summer or what have you. I mean, it, it, it holds up and the message is great. So. Wow. That's cool of you to say. Yeah. Nice work guys. I agree. Troy. You did a great job on it, man. You too, man. It was a team effort. Like every, everyone, you know, you and your, your brothers and the guys from the mountain bike, de mountain bike department had so much uh, influence and um, 
telling me what they like, what they didn't like. Even I remember uh, Todd Hicks, you know, he was, he was one of the guys that he, he knew what was cool and what wasn't cool. And I remember showing him a segment and he gave me the thumbs of approval. And I don't know, it was just a, um, it was just like this kind of competitiveness yet, you know, I was in this uh, bubble and uh, you know, I, I had to be at work every day cause everyone was there. And nowadays I can go off in my, you know, studio or whatever, and no one knows what I'm doing, but there, you know, it was, kind of like being on stage and, but it was a good, um, uh, it was good to have all those eyeballs on it because it just kept pushing it in, in the kind of movie that, you know, that Fox should put out. So it was, I mean, yeah, I shot it and, you know, did a lot of the editing and stuff like that, but it, it was, everyone from the company was into it because they were, it was going to help, kind of launched the mountain bike um, arm of Fox, um, if it hadn't already, but they were building product and stuff around it. And um, it was cool to be there at that time because I knew that, um, that this film mattered, you know, to the company and there was, there was high expectations for it. I mean, the Terra Firma films were, you know, you know, they, the, you know, they set the bar. So, um, chain smoke had to do the same thing or else you know i, I wanted to i wanted a job the next year so i just wanted to make sure that we, <laughs> that we you know did our best now you brought a ton of creativity to it i remember you know that, that was a, i remember you saying hey i want to spend some money to get an original score done i didn't even really understand how, what that could <laughs> possibly bring to a an action sports film but um or another another thing you asked me was uh, you said, "Hey, we, I want to get uh, I want to get the rights to use some Rodney King footage," <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it took a little convincing, but but we ended up doing that as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah you 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 did give me some freedom, <clears throat> but a few times you're like, "No, no, you can't do that." Like, what are you thinking? I forget what it was. I remember I got some stock footage and I wanted to do something crazy. But um, you let that uh, the opening slide though. That was pretty out there. Uh, the the, the uh, conference thing. Yeah. Where did you shoot that? In some old abandoned building. Uh, yeah, I forget where it was. It was somewhere like where I lived out in Saratoga. But that that was such. I was thinking about that. That was such a weird. It was so weird. It was really weird. I remember you yeah. you gave me the, the the tape, Parts of Darkness. You said, hey, watch this. Because, of course, I'd seen Apocalypse Now a few times. And uh, so I watched it. And uh, I still had a hard time making the connection on <laughs> what you were thinking. I don't but know it, how that flied. I don't know how you guys let that go through. And that that's not me at all either to be on camera. As I'm so not like that. I'm, I like to be behind it. So... I don't even know what motivated me, but I, I, that, that uh, documentary made me want to be, you know, a filmmaker, just watching what Francis Ford Coppola went through making Apocalypse Now and, you know, just seeing what, what, you know, his dedication and how creative he was. And I, I remember, you know, going through the process of making my first film and all this, a lot of the stuff that he was complaining about and, you know, going crazy or was happening to me too. So. I just try to draw some sort of a parallel and uh, spoof that. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, if I could do it over again, I might do a different intro, but it is what it is. I can't change it now. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So Troy, I don't know if I mentioned it to you the other day, but um, I think Greg recently found the camera that, uh, that you use to film this. And so <clears throat> we have that. Oh, I'm kind wow. of feeling like, man, with that, maybe we get the band back together and <laughs> make another get, and making a new chain smoke. Yeah, yeah. fifty thousand is all I need. <laughs> <laughs> it's that old cinema cinema products camera. Remember that thing? Yeah, it was called a gizmo, right? No, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, gizmo. Well, I think that was the short kind of nickname for it, but yeah, it was a cool looking camera. Yeah, we should we should just use that just to like just to put a little bit of that old school feel into it because 
now it'll be on like 8k on a red or something and i don't know i think i think that film something about it's just it's hard to explain it's just kind of that like fuzzy feel good it's like kind of like a hug i don't know it's hard to explain what film you know looks i agree like. yeah i love i love the look of film now the uh, uh what gave you the idea what, what inspired you to do the you know, when you would be shooting, you would always, you'd shoot the shot and then you'd, you'd like pull off like that, you know, you would, mm -hmm. you would, um, and then you would use that as part of the edit to the transition between cuts. Yeah. Where, was, what, where did you get that idea? I've seen that done before, but for me, I, I, uh, I was like editing it in my head, you know, because I would wait, 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 I, you know, because I, I was always afraid that maybe the bike was going by too slow. So I always wanted to give it that little bit extra movement, but I knew I wanted to use those wipe ins and wipe, wipe outs because once, once the mountain bike went by you and you, they started going away and you start seeing it from behind that the shot gets boring really quick. So I would, I would always whip out before I, if, I don't know, right before I, I knew I was going to cut, I whipped out just to like give it a little bit more. It was, you know, it was, I don't recommend it because then you're locked into that shot. You know, you can't, you wish it was longer, but you have no choice, but it seemed to work, um, especially through the trees and stuff that gave you such a, a, a cool, you know, if there's a lot of detail in the landscape around you, when you do that whip in, it just, I don't know. It was just something that, uh, it also I've keeps the motion before. going, you know, they're, they're, because the, the visually it's just always moving. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of times I would just throw those in, even just in a cut, like um, the stuff in Vegas, when like in between shots, I would just throw in a, two or three frames of the city lights just for some contrast. So, you know, doing that in camera, the, the whip pans in and out, I started to use that also as like an editing technique to throw like a few flash frames of this and that. And another cool thing about film is a lot of times you'll, you'll get the scratches and you'll get the, you know, the tail outs, you know, how it would flash to white and you would see the, uh, the edge of the frame come in. I mean, I use that stuff all the time, you know, that was, that, you could see that throughout the movie. So, um, it was just like the transitions were, were important, you know, that the edits were important, but another thing, um, when you said, uh, an original score is I had these shots that I wanted, you know, to go from Vegas to LA or go from, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I knew, I knew how the segments were going to go. So I had to, um, you know, take a shot and mirror it to another shot. So in order to do that, I needed a score underneath to create that, okay, this song ends and this song starts. I didn't know how to get that transition. So I had the visuals, but I just needed an original score to kind of bring me through in and out. So that's, you know, that's why the original score was important. It was just for the transitions between, you know, the songs that we purchased. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So, uh, Troy, like looking back um, and, and then thinking about today and the, the future filmmakers of tomorrow, what advice would you have for some of the, some of the kids out there that, are inspired if they haven't seen this yet, but probably will be after they watch it. What, what advice would you have to, to the guys and gals that are out there today? Um, I always, um, first of all, it's, it's, it was luck. I mean, I, that's all I could say. Cause I have a lot of uh, young filmmakers that email me a lot and say, Hey, how, how do I get in business? How do I, you know, do what you do? I'm, I'm really into snowboarding. I want to do that. But it was, it was luck, you know, I mean, Greg showing up at my fraternity to watch a premiere that his, you know, his ex-girlfriend happened to say, I don't know. It just, I, okay. That was, that was lucky. But then, but then after that, um, I, I think that you have to hook up with a brand or hook up with an athlete. And the way to get into this is you, if you have an athlete and you, you know, somebody that, you know, or maybe, you know, whoever your favorite athlete is, go to that athlete and say, Hey, I'll, I'll work for you for free. I'll, I'll do, you know, quick edits for you. And, you know, and then that athlete will, once he gets to know you and you're doing stuff for him for free, then maybe his sponsors will see what you're doing. And then 
whoever's sponsoring him, you know, could want, could have some, you know, want some of your work and then, or you could sell it to them. But I, I think it either starts with an athlete or, or with the brand. So, but the first thing you should do is go out with your buddies and shoot something, you know, and then you, you got to have something on tape. It doesn't have to be great. And then you would probably, probably go the, the rider route with something like that and say, Hey, I'll shoot for free. Um, or you go to, um, you know, uh, you know, like, like a Fox or, or a company and you submit it. And those are the two ways that I would recommend because yeah, other than that, I think you'd just be waiting around for something, for something to fall out of the tree, you know? Cool. Super cool. Well, right on guys. Um, I appreciate you taking the time today to, to think back on that moment and thanks for the work that you did then that really established so much of what we're seeing today. Um, pretty epic stuff. So thank you. And, uh, to everybody out in the internet, uh, enjoy chain, enjoy chain smoke. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks thanks for having you. me guys. Yeah, for sure. Chain smoke, Troy, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All thanks right. a lot guys. See you guys. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Thank Bye -bye. you guys. Thank you. Later. Take care. You okay? Knock the wind out of you, huh?